Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today I want to provide an overview of some EDC and survival accessories for your smartphones. So let's get into it. Alright, so I personally think a cell phone is an excellent survival accessory. I use one all the time when I'm hiking, namely for the GPS function, but also for photography, information, a variety of things like that. So there's a variety of items that you don't see here that I'm going to quickly go over because I thought they were worth sharing. They're a little out of my price range, but they might be within yours. Now I'm using a Galaxy Note 2 to film this. That is my phone. This is my wife's phone right here that I'm just using for demonstration. I always use Android operating system based phones. I always look for three things when I'm getting a cell phone and that's going to be expandable memory, removable battery and USB, micro USB compatibility. Now for those of you who are into Apple products, uh, this is not meant to be a jab at you, but I personally prefer having those things, especially the expandable memory. I certainly don't want to be dependent on the cloud based operating systems. If the grid were to go down and you have all the information on the cloud, it's not going to do you a hell of a lot of good. Also having a removable battery is great because you could easily swap out batteries and batteries are a lot lighter to carry than battery packs. So if you were just going on a short trip, you could just pack a couple extra batteries. And that USB universality just makes it a bit more easy to find a charger or a charge board or something of that effect if you're out and about. Now I know there's a lot of technophobes out there who won't see the merit in utilizing a cell phone in a survival situation, but they can be excellent tools. There's so many different sensors and applications that you can use on here for survival purposes. The possibilities literally are endless. Now the first one is a mil spec case made by Joggernaut. These things are like totally bulletproof, they're Molly compatible, they're just incredibly awesome. I would encourage you to go check them out. Another newer device to come to the market is the Snooper Scope. It's a night vision camera which connects to your phone through Wi-Fi. So it does function independent of the grid. It forms a network between your phone and the device. So that means you can use it anywhere. But if the grid is up, there is software that will allow you to use the cloud in order to relay whatever visuals you're seeing on the device to you. So it could definitely be used for home security. There may be some advantages to the snooper scope over most thermal imaging systems, namely in the clarity of the picture. However, thermal imaging has its obvious benefits. The various thermal imaging devices that I'm going to talk about will be able to pick up heat signatures that won't be able to be detected by the snooper scope. Another area that one could explore had they the resources to do so would be the area of drones and robotics. Now drones and smartphones can integrate in a couple different ways. They can act as relays for information to the smartphone so they could definitely serve a reconnaissance purpose or you could actually mount the smartphone on the device itself. There certainly is some interesting technology on the horizon with aerial drones, uh, namely ones that can actually follow you, which is kind of scary from an Orwellian sense, but uh, for those of you who are interested in technology, you may want to look into this a little further. Bear in mind that if you are planning on using a drone for some sort of security surveillance, it doesn't take a whole lot of birdshot to knock it out of the sky. Now next is the Carson Optic smartphone mount, which I'm actually going to be doing a review on. And basically this allows you to attach your smartphone to all sorts of optical devices like scopes, binoculars, monoculars, rangefinders, telescopes, microscopes, things of that nature. Now another device that the Urban Prepper recommended I get for doing some of my testing videos uh, with respect to my renewable energy sources like the KTOR power box and solar charging systems is this port pow powered monitor. This thing is really awesome because it allows you to basically plug it in to any USB connection and it tells you how much power it's putting out, amps, uh, milliwatts and voltage. So pretty cool stuff. One thing I would strongly recommend is you get yourself a set of high speed USB macro to micro cords and you're going to be able to charge your devices a little faster. It's going to improve data transfer speeds and preferably you're going to want cords that are smaller as they're probably going to facilitate a faster charge. Another device I would recommend for communicating off grid is the Gotenna receiver for Android smartphones. Peaceful Prepper did a review on this so I'm just going to post a link to her video here. I believe it uses Bluetooth technology to communicate with other cell phones. One of the best GPS apps out there for Android has to be the Backcountry Navigator Pro. It's probably the best $10 you're ever going to spend, especially if you do a lot of off-grid hiking. 
It allows you to download different types of maps that have different topographical styles to them and just an excellent thing to use off grid. Of course your GPS is still going to work if the power goes out so long as those satellites in the sky are still spinning and they have power to relay that signal to you. One thing that might help out the urban survivalist is the Porta Pau Smart Charge and it's a little device that costs about $10 and what this is going to do when you plug in your phone to a computer to charge it not only is it going to charge it faster but it's going to block any sort of data transfer which is going to limit any sort of security breaches which you may incur in connecting your device to various computers throughout the day. It has a built-in smart charge chip that's going to detect what sort of device you're using and it's going to basically adjust the power flow accordingly. Of course it's not going to charge your devices any faster than they're capable of being charged but it's going to get you the maximum amount of charge to those devices and it might actually enhance your solar charging experiences as well by drawing as much power as possible and taking it into your phone. One little device that I would strongly recommend is the iHome speaker system. Now there's a variety of different speaker systems you can get for your smartphone and this is only one of them but it's the one that I've had the best experience with so far and it's very loud it's got a nice sound to it nice uh, blend of bass and treble and it's got a really good battery life definitely useful mostly for entertainment purposes but might also serve some other functions like auditory signaling uh, could even be used for hunters who are using the game call smartphone apps so if you wanted to amplify those a bit this would definitely be the thing to do it <laughs> The thing I like about iPhones is that they certainly have more peripheral options, so you're going to have more case options. There are these cool Swiss Army knife style cases that you can get for your smartphones, or you can get uh, smartphone cases that have increased battery life. A lot of those are limited to the iPhone because, of course, there is only one size as opposed to Android, which comes in a variety of different sizes, so there's no way a company can make that many different products. But now I'm going to quickly go over the items that I have here for my Samsung phone which some of them are essential and some of them are obviously optional. So the first thing you're going to want is a good case for your phone. Now I've always went with OtterBox. I've never had any problems. I can only say good things about OtterBox. They did have a line called the OtterBox Armor, which is one I would have opted for. However, they didn't make it for my Galaxy Note 2 phone. So I did actually get the Galaxy Note 2 Defender case. I never had any problems with that. I just uh, had used it so much and put it through so much abuse that I eventually had to swap it. Now I have a OtterBox commuter case, which works really well. You can drop it. I've dropped it countless amounts of times and I've never cracked the screen. There's barely a scratch on the phone. So I would strongly recommend OtterBox, but there's a variety of different cell phone cases you can get now. And a lot of cell phones now come with a hydrophobic nanotechnology waterproofing on them. So you don't really need a case for the waterproofing aspect but you certainly still want it for shock and crush protection so if you didn't and what i've commonly used in the past is one of these and it's just a aqua pack especially if you're doing a lot of hiking in the bush and it's raining out and you still want to access your gps and you're using an older phone that doesn't have that hydrophobic capacity then you know this is going to definitely come in handy and i find it a bit more useful than these molly compatible cell phone systems now this is one that was sent to me by one tigris and central oregon survival network did an excellent review of this product and i do think depending on your needs and what sort of job you have and stuff like that it could be incredibly useful i however wear my proper lightweight tactical pants so i always have a big enough pocket for my cell phone so for me in a lot of cases even when hiking this is probably not something i'm going to use too much However, you know, it might come in handy. It's certainly something I'll keep on my 511 pack and it will serve a function, maybe not for a cell phone, but for something else. But it's definitely for you mil spec types. This is something that you might find useful. Now, the great thing I love about Android phones is the ability to store incredible amounts of information in a small space. Now this is a 64 gigabyte micro SD card. 64 gigabits of information. You can actually get 128 gigabyte ones now and they're already talking about 258. So that is a huge, huge asset, not only for knowledge and information, but entertainment. Look at my video about the digital doomsday library. I can't remember what it's called. I'll post a link to it here. Many of you have probably seen my review on the Seek 
thermal imaging system. So this is a very affordable uh, thermal imaging system. It's about $250 to $300. So when I say affordable, I mean it in a relative sense. So it's much cheaper than the FLIR systems, the FLIR systems, and it's even cheaper than the Therm app system. However, it's probably not going to be as good as those, but it's certainly going to be functional and useful for everyday use. Another thing that you might want to get because it's very cheap and very useful is just a wide angle lens. So you can put this on your smartphone and it just easily clips on there like that. And uh, you can take wide angle photos. So if, if many of you are familiar with GoPros, you can basically turn your smartphone into an action cam. And if you get the right tripod mounts, you can mount it to all that different GoPro stuff as well. And I actually have all that stuff. You can also get microscopes that attach to your phones. This is just some generic brand. It has a three in one. There's also a fisheye and a small microscope that comes with it. Now, another great thing to have is a gorilla pod. And I know probably not so much for survival situation, but chances are, you know, for everyday carry use even, have something like this in your backpack. It's really great. You can just mount this thing to so many different places, trees, just anything that you can imagine. You could even mount this to a bike or something like that and uh, you can get it pretty stable in there. So an excellent thing to add and even if it was a survival situation, you know, reconnaissance, you could do some sort of scouting with that uh, with your phone's camera or video camera or what have you. And with that, of course, you're going to want one of these cell phone mounts. Another thing I like to use uh, for making videos anyway sometimes to emit the background noise is a lavalier. So this one just has a splitter here. So you just plug and play this into your smartphone and then you're going to have yourself a microphone here with generous amount of cords so you can stand far away from the camera and not have to worry about things like wind and if you're making a video. Now you can also get smartphone batteries and that's what I love about Samsung phones in particular, the older ones anyways I guess now, is that you can get different types of batteries. I would recommend getting the Anchor batteries. The Anchors are probably going to run you about 20 bucks but that's just as good as a Samsung battery right there so definitely go with the anchors and here I have my Trent power pack extreme so that's got 12,000 milliamps and of course it's uh, crush proof drop proof waterproof all that stuff so excellent dust proof as well uh, in terms of other packs the Trent power pack extreme actually isn't being made anymore I would recommend the lime fuel but there's a lot of other options you're gonna possibly want some renewable charging options which I've discussed on this channel ad nauseum from the crank power options to solar power options there's a variety of those out there that of course you can power your pack with now one more thing these Coleman packets so if you have a larger smartphone a phablet as they're called you could always stick it in there and this is dirt cheap it's like three bucks and uh, i don't think you're going to have touch screen functionality through there you might but uh, i wouldn't depend on it for that but it definitely will keep your phone waterproof so that concludes my smartphone peripherals edc survival options video if you have any comments or concerns please leave them in the comment section below don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper O. Check out the Canadian Preppers Network blog, an excellent resource for survivalists and preppers.